So what happened to the budgie desktop? Let me tell you a story. Some years ago, 2011, a new GNOME release comes out and it's wildly different than anything anyone has ever seen before. It looks something like this. It is clunky, it's slow as molasses, and a lot of people have issues with it. This is coming off the back of GNOME desktop being a wildly functional and a really well-adopted desktop environment for the Linux desktop. And with all of the changes that came to GNOME 3 and GTK 3, we had a renaissance of new desktop environments popping up to try and fill the functional void that GNOME had left behind in the name of simplicity and also accessibility and uh, compatibility with touch devices as that was seen to be the future. So Cinnamon Desktop was a great example of this. The Linux Mint team championed that desktop and uh, sort of made their own version based on GTK technology and uh, some other things as time evolved. Well, another such option that didn't end up being as popular and mainly due to the fact that it wasn't tied to a project like Linux Mint was Budgie. The Budgie desktop was a desktop that was designed to be very minimalist, very elegant, and very simple. And it was developed in collaboration or by Ike Dehoti, I think I'm saying that name right, for the Solus project. Back then it was called Evolve OS, and this is in about 2013 that this project officially became a thing. Now, there was a bit of a groundswell of support for this new kid on the block. What this desktop environment brought to the table was an ease of use and minimalism that was not seen, uh, especially when paired with the functionality it provided on mainstream offerings from KDE Plasma, which was still fairly bloated at the time, and GNOME 3. So Budgie had a bright future ahead of itself. And as its development continued, and also the popularity of the now named Solus uh, OS or Solus was also increasing. We had sort of this moment where the Budgie desktop seemed to have a lot of momentum going for it. And around 2016 is when I switched to using the Budgie desktop for my daily driver. And, uh, and it was a really nice ride. In fact, you can go and check out a series of videos that I did um, shortly after that. I think I did a series of videos in 2018 about the Budgie desktop, but it ended up being streamlined into a very nice uh, desktop environment. Now, the main components of the Budgie desktop, according to its current GitHub page, are the Budgie menu and Raven, which is the pop-out sidebar that handles everything from applets to notifications and the notification system itself, the run dialogue, and a few other little bits and pieces to help the system uh, work. Now, the funny thing is, is that by the time we reach 2016, 2017, we have an issue where the future of Budgie is called into question. That's what I wanna kind of dive in deeper with today, because as of May, 2022, which was some months ago from the recording of this video, the team behind Budgie's current development uh, addressed the state of the Budgie desktop uh, in 2022. It's been through a very stalled couple of years, and that's putting it lightly. But thankfully, there is a lot of enthusiasm and, uh, and quite frankly, a lot of transparency around what this desktop seeks to achieve in the coming years. So that's what I want to dive into today. But before we get too deep in the weeds, quick shout out to the fact that these notes on the post of the state of the budgie desktop are just, I mean, it's wild. It's like the Kanban sticky notes gone crazy, but I got to appreciate it. And you know why? Because of today's sponsor, Shortform. Okay, so while you're recovering from whiplash from that segue, Shortform is an online platform that creates some of the best summaries to some of the best nonfiction books available today. And it's not just summarizing their books. They provide really insightful articles into different areas that you might be interested in, as well as thoughtful connections between the content in one book and content in related books. Now, the reason that I had an appreciation for the way that those notes were laid out in that blog post was because of what I've been reading in Zonke Aaron's How to Take Smart Notes. 
Now, again, this is a service that you could use to knock out reading and get and glean the main ideas from leading books out there. But short form really comes into their own when they hyperlink and expand on these ideas and give you other things to go and check out to help you continue to expand your understanding of what's in the book. They're constantly adding new books on a variety of topics and subscribers to short form also get to vote on which books they'd like to hear about next. So to get a five day unlimited trial of short form, check the link in the description or go to shortform.com galactic and you'll also get a 20% additional discount on an annual subscription. So if you value your learning and your development as a person, then definitely check out Shortform at the link in the description and special thanks to Shortform for sponsoring today's episode. So here's what the Budgie desktop currently looks like in its 10.4.6 iteration. This is on Ubuntu 22.10 and, uh, and you can see the components that work here, the Budgie menu, the Raven side panel and the notifications that are all baked into the desktop here. We're using a few other tools as well, like uh, the Plank dock and a few other bits and pieces. But it's also worth noting how flexible and functional the Budgie desktop is with a keyboard and mouse. It's not just touch oriented like GNOME uh, positioned itself back in the day. It is uh, quite efficient and minimalist as a mouse and keyboard workflow as well. But what exactly happened in 2017 when this project seemed to have so much popularity? It's actually a bit muddy. But here is an oversimplified version. And, uh, and if any of the original Budgie team are floating around and happen to see this, definitely feel free to clarify things that I get wrong in the comments below, or if you know stuff that I don't. But essentially, my understanding of it is that Budgie 11 was always seen to be the next significant chapter in the Budgie desktop. It was going to bring, hopefully, a platform that they could build a lot more functionality to the desktop environment moving ahead. The challenge was is that the relationship between GNOME and a lot of the GNOME technologies that the Budgie desktop relied upon uh, and the direction that the GNOME team seemed to be going were uh, very incompatible with what the developers of Solus and the developers of the Budgie desktop wanted. It's also worth noting back in 2016, 2017, that the developers of Budgie and Solus were very closely linked. In fact, one would argue that without the Solus development, there would be no Budgie development. And that in and of itself created problems. So what it meant was that for some time, there were rumors starting to circulate that according to Ike, the original developer of Solus, and one of the key founding contributors of Budgie was that Budgie was going to be moving to QT. Now, the original blog post uh, from Ike about this decision uh, from the Solus project uh, I don't know if it's still available. There's a link on Google, but it's uh, but it's sending a 404 at the moment. So I'm referring to this article um, back from that time at the start of January 2017 by Joey Snedden on OMG Ubuntu. And, uh, and it takes a few key quotes from that blog about the fact that they needed a more powerful toolkit and were looking at Qt uh, or Qt as a solution for that moving forward. Uh, now, this is very quickly the fate of the Budgie desktop becomes embroiled in the Solus project as a whole. And that project went through a little bit of upheaval in terms of a change of leadership and project uh, leader. And, uh, and over time that got handed over to Josh Strobel on the Solus project and he started to take the brunt of both Solus and the Budgie desktop. Also worth noting during this time that the official Ubuntu Budgie remix uh, also launched around the 1604 LTS release of Ubuntu. And that exposed the Budgie desktop to a lot more users on top of the already growing user base on Solus. But this growing momentum and user base meant that some uh, careful decision making was going to be required moving forward if the Budgie desktop was not going to fall in a heap. So between 2016 and 2018, we had rumors of Budgie 11 being worked on in the background. We had the Budgie 10 series of desktop go into maintenance mode or a feature freeze, meaning that they wanted to stop active development apart from bug fixes on Budgie 10 so they could work on Budgie 11. It meant that the Budgie desktop's development also kind of had to either stall or change directions fairly quickly. And so over time between 2018 and 2021, the project Budgie 10 was reopened and active work was 
put into contributing new features to Budgie 10. And there was still very little word on Budgie 11. Now in a blog post on the 14th of September, 2021, Josh Strobel hopped on and gave a full breakdown about why the uh, divorce essentially from GNOME and its technologies was being considered for the upcoming release of Budgie 11. There was still very little word on the ground in terms of what this new Budgie 11 desktop was going to look like, but rather than mentioning QT as the primary alternative, Josh Strobel ended up highlighting three options, the EFL or Enlightenment Foundation Libraries, Qt or Iced. And he seemed to be leaning towards Enlightenment Foundation Libraries as the prime candidate. Now, fast forward to the state of the Budgie desktop given in May 2022, and we get a little bit more confirmation about what is going on. Mostly confirming what a lot of people had suspected regarding Budgie 10 and Budgie 11, the relationship between the development of these two. So Budgie 10 was going to be actively worked on as bringing new features through the 10.5 and 10.6 series. And that holds true in that the recent release of Budgie 10.6.4 uh, that was paired with the Ubuntu Budgie 22.10 release, continued to add some features and fix some bugs for this moving forward. And they are planning on releasing the 10.7 series. However, they do have active contributions and ideas towards the development of Budgie 11. And I wish I had time to go through and highlight all of them, but honestly, they do a great job of outlining what their problems are and what they want to solve and how they're going to solve it and how Budgie as a project is going to operate moving forward. Because as since 2021, uh, Josh Strobel ended up stepping away from the Solus project and focusing at least more primarily on the Budgie desktop. And Josh, if you happen to read this, great work by the way, uh, let us know if that is true or not down below. So I'll leave some of the goals here for Budgie 11 uh, on the screen and you guys can kind of take that in as I kind of wrap this up a little bit. So some of the significant challenges facing the Budgie desktop are the same that are facing other desktops like Cinnamon that rely heavily on GTK. They have to figure out whether they're going to jump on board with GTK 4 and GTK 5 beyond that or whether they're going to end up going their own direction and figuring stuff out for themselves. Uh, potentially what this means for the Linux desktop is further fragmentation, but at the same time, it could also create a viable alternative that gives users a lot of the functionality that they like from GNOME with a lot more of the feature parity and maybe flexibility that they were used to with older desktop environments. I guess on a more personal level, I really hope the Budgie desktop succeeds because we need these projects to hang around and keep each other uh, hungry for new features and new development. Once the open source world settles into a monopoly in the GNOME desktop, or maybe even a duopoly between KDE Plasma and GNOME, those projects start to stagnate. Whereas when you have these other desktops that take up a significant market share like Cinnamon on Linux Mint, you keep the desktop game moving forward. Now there is an argument there for fragmentation hurts overall adoption of Linux, and that might be true. But I think the Budgie desktop is a great example of a project that actually benefits from being its own thing. It provides a great user experience for those who want a more minimalist, maybe a little bit Mac OS-ish desktop without sacrificing any of the functionality or flexibility that one might have to if they want to adopt something like the Pantheon desktop or GNOME itself. So that's my two cents and why am my understanding, the short version anyway, of what happened to the Budgie desktop. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to see new things from this desktop in times to come. Uh, spoiler, I've been postponing a deep dive into the Budgie desktop for so long, literally for like two years now because of this problem, which is what prompted this video in the first place. So if you watch this far to the end, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.